Um, what I'm going to do for the next 15 minutes or so is just go through Auckland's vision and strategy for waste and just a bit of an explanation about the approach that we've taken um, to tackle some of the issues and challenges which probably aren't unique um, and are probably, probably ch uh, are facing most major cities in the world but um, they're, they're certainly unique to New Zealand. So just a bit more context about um, Auckland and the council. So Auckland is now probably one of the largest unitary councils in the world. Um, so it, it, uh, it amalgamated in 2010 and it brought together seven city and district councils, one regional council into one. And so it now serves a population of about one and a half million residents. Um, quite a, a, a new and emerging population in the sense that about 40% of population was uh, born overseas and um, about 50% are European descendants, about 25% uh, Asian and the remainder is either Maori or um, Pacific peoples. Auckland actually has the, the largest Polynesian population of any city in the world. Um, as far as the, the, um, the, the former council areas, if you look at the map there, so from the, the, the top of the dark green area down to the, uh, to the brown area, it's about 150 kilometers. So um, a fair size, about 70% of the, um, the area is rural, uh, but about 90% of the population actually live in the urban areas. So as Val said, um, the council's aspiration is to be the world's most livable city and Auckland uh, fares pretty favourably in most quality of living surveys um, and, and is, is commonly in the top 10. So the goal of zero waste is, 20, is by 2040, which doesn't sound particularly aspirational when you hear San Francisco and, and their, their target of 2020. But uh, our plan is underpinned by a number of, of key targets and key actions uh, focus very much around um, you, seeing waste as a resource, but actually using it to achieve some, some really great social, cultural and environmental outcomes. Um, so probably not surprisingly, it, the, the, the waste plan that was adopted in 2012, um, which is based on some uh, uh, legislation uh, where every council in New Zealand has to have a, a waste management and minimisation plan, takes us over a six year period. And... Um, I suppose with, with, um, with the amalgamation, the key thing was to, to have that one plan that I suppose united a lot of strategies and, uh, and services that the previous councils had operated. So my role, I came in after 2012, my role has been to, to take the strategy through service design, procurement, ready for implementation. Just a bit of context, the, um, the, the former councils had about 50 contracts um, for collections, disposal, processing, and I had a mixed range of services, methodology, timeframes. So it's been a real challenge uh, and a significant transformation moving towards a, not a one-size-fits-all, but, but a, a logical fit uh, that will take us into the future to deliver zero waste. And over the next 10 years or so, we'll award contracts um, to the value of about a billion dollars. So the problem we're trying to fix um, is that in the Auckland region last year, 1.2 million tonnes went to landfill, but the council only controls directly of less than 20% of that waste stream. The, um, the former councils divested a lot of the assets to the private sector, uh, they either sold them off or they, they leased or, or rented them on a, on a long-term basis. Um, this picture just demonstrates um, uh, something that we use for our education and awareness and flags that, um, you know, in a week we send 25,000 tonnes of, of waste to landfill, so enough to fill Eden Park um, to, the, to the rugby post each week. Might be worth just saying a bit about the context around New Zealand as well, unlike a lot of other cities in the world, the, um, it's a fairly non-regulated um, uh, waste environment, there are no mandatory product stewardship schemes and the waste levy is only $10 a tonne. So the actual business case for alternative technology, uh, landfill is very cheap, um, doesn't help council's cause at all. So on our journey to zero waste, we, um, as I said, we had probably three key targets. So we had that short-term target up to 2018 where we would focus on 
curbside refuse, so the waste that the council had more direct control on. We also, very early on, and we've achieved a target around reducing our own waste internally, so council walking the talk. Um, so all our council facilities, whether it's offices, libraries, leisure centres, have a three-bin system, and we're doing a lot of work around uh, deconstruction as we, um, as we do repairs and refurbishments across our, our, uh, our buildings. Um, we um, we focus very much on, on recovering uh, as much material or recycling as much material as possible. And a recent, um, as we move to the, to the, to the super city model, um, we've, we've moved offices and we've refurbished a, a 29 storey building and 90% of the material that came out of that was, was recovered. So the other um, key, key target is, is how we influence the, the overall waste stream, so the commercial waste stream. And that's a longer term target for up to 2027, where we'll, uh, where we'll reduce that by 30%. So just focusing on um, the, the average household bin, our audits um, highlight that the average bin or bag, so we have a mixed service at the moment, some areas have wheeled bins, others have, have bags, either rates funded or, or um, prepaid bags. Um, the, the key, the, the the key waste streams uh, in that landfill bin are uh, food waste, a um, small amount of green waste, and um, still a, a sizable amount of recyclables that could go to, um, uh, go to processing rather than to landfill. So as we focus on this target, um, so this is the short-term target that we're very much focused on at the moment, we'll see the average uh, waste per, per person go from 160 kgs to, to 110 and what that will do will take our recycling rates from 40% uh, which they currently are up to around 60%. So a key, key um, initiative to deliver that is the, the focus on a uh, three bin system. So the, if you go from the, the, the right hand side, um, recycling most um, most of the former councils had a wheeled bin of some sort, but it was uh, a variety of sizes. Um, some had commingled, some had part commingled and then source separated of paper or, or glass. So um, the default we're moving towards is a 240 litre in procurement at the moment. So we would also offer a, a range of other uh, bin sizes depending on the size of the family. Um, we're also rolling out at the same time an organic service and that's food waste only in urban areas. So as 90% of Auckland is, is urban, that's about uh, 460,000 households, so a pretty sizable rollout plan. Those two services, the recycling, the organics, will be rates funded, um, whereas the, the waste plan is around um, the principle of dispose of pays. So refuse will move towards um, user pays, world bin. And really the, 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 the argument that we're using and the promotion that we're doing is you maximise your recycling, you use the organics, you compost at home, then actually there really shouldn't be much left in your, in your wheeled bin, therefore you're saving money. So refuse is, is where there's going to be the biggest change. So as I said, moving to dispose of pays or user pays. So the current service, about 50% of the region is on a rates funded either wheeled bin or you put out your own bags on the curbside, um, and the remainder is, is user pay, so prepaid, where council, although it contracts out the collection, actually um, it takes the risk around revenue and market share. So we compete in a competitive market. Where, where residents are in a user pays areas, they generally pay around $150 less per year in their rates. So there's an incentive, and not surprisingly, um, if you look at the, the average uh, volume, weight, and behaviour, then um, there's a lot less waste being put out in, in user pays areas and rates funded areas. So as we, as we transition to the, to the new approach over the next few years, it's going to be a regionalised approach, as I said, a paper lift bin, so some form of RFID technology with chips in bins, um, readers on the bin lifting arms, um, with the principle of a prepaid account, so a lot of back office systems supporting that. So for council, it's probably fairly unique in the world where um, 
we're operating in that commercial market, but um, the, the move to pay-as-you-throw bins just moves that commercial model to a different level. So, um, as I said, the council will has made a decision to compete in that market. So, um, it is basically a free market where any any waste company can come in and provide provide bins. Some already do, probably more on a prescription basis. Um, so we're focusing our attention on what makes us unique as a council and, and we're testing a few uh, uh, marketing campaigns at the moment for our pay-as-you-throw bags. So across the region we have about 70% uh, market share of where we compete in a user pays market. And um, our focus is on what, what's our point of difference. And the council's made that call that we're going to compete. So um, we've got a campaign at the moment which talks about um, by council, by the bag that gives back, and everyone benefits. So it's, it's by council is good for the community. We're trying to create that link that if there are any surpluses, it's used to, to invest back into community uh, waste minimization or behavior change initiatives. So um, another key, uh, key project is, as we roll out user pays, is um, organic service so we've been doing a number of trials over the last year or so in rates funded areas and user pays areas to <clears throat> to assess what the difference in participation set out rates contamination rates um, but also looking to to try and win over some community advocates so those that maybe are in pay as you throw area are now using a food waste service actually how much are they how much are they saving um, so obviously you, you use the services, as I said before, um, you're not putting as many bags out. A bag costs $2 generally, um, a, uh, a bag, a per lift. So, um, so there are some really good stories coming out about how residents have, have embraced this change and actually can see the, the, the benefits. We're also looking through our um, trials to, to share the information with industry as we go through just about to start procurement for uh, organics collections and also organic processing as well so better understanding about or testing what those volumes are in particular areas and, and different communities. So why have we just gone for organics? Well um, we recognise as you saw in the in the average bin 40% uh, in the average bin or bag is, is food waste so um, that equates to around 90,000 tonnes in the domestic waste stream and we, uh, we anticipate that we can get over half of that, nearer 50,000 tonnes um, out through the, through the food waste service in the first year. We haven't gone down the, the, the green waste um, service, uh, the, the previous councils hadn't, hadn't entered into that market, there's a, a fairly mature green waste industry that's operating on a, uh, on a subscription basis so we've made a call not to compete against that. Um, clearly, if we did enter that market, there's additional costs uh, for collection, additional volume as well. Um, so so that's, that's the reason for food waste only, which I understand is, is quite different to probably the trend in, in Australia and other cities. So on the back of that, although we're promoting the food waste collection, we're also doing a lot of work around prevention, education and awareness. And our... Um, uh, our industry body Waste Mins has um, really led and facilitated a campaign based on the, the RAPS Love Food Hate Waste campaign um, and over 60 councils across New Zealand are supporting that. So it's based very much around you know, the smarter shopping, planning your menus, love your leftovers type principles. We've got quite a lot of publicity um, on this campaign across New Zealand and it's, and it's been quite focused on Auckland because Auckland is, has about a third of the population of, of New Zealand um, and really highlighting that the average household is, um, is throwing away around uh, $563 a, a year on wasted food which um, if you extrapolate that out across the, across the country it's, it's nearly a billion dollars. So another key um, key project for the council is, is to, to establish a resource recovery network. Um, so making sure that we're using waste as a resource to create those, those outcomes, those social environmental outcomes. As part of this, we, um, we're moving away from our current inorganic service provision. So we have an inorganic bulky waste service, which again is, is still a, quite a mixed, mixed service 
delivery across the region. But, but basically, if you look at the pictures on the left, that's, uh, that's what it looks like on the, on the curbside. Um, we go around areas either on an annual or every other year basis, um, encourage people to put out their inorganics on the berm, and, um, and that's what happens. Last year, we collected about 25,000 tonnes of inorganic, very limited resource recovery. There's a bit of scavenging through, uh, through local operators and a few residents. But on the whole, it's a bad look for, for the city. It certainly doesn't fit with our image of the world's most livable city. Um, but also, it's a hazard to our, to our operators and to, and to residents. Um, and clearly, if we're going to advocate for product stewardship as well, it, it undermines those basic principles. So um, we're moving from, as from October, we've got a, a regional service, which is going to be an annual pre-booked service. It's rates funded, but it'll be collected on property. And we anticipate that we'll recover between 30 and 50% of that material that'll go off uh, to a central distribution point. And then um, those reusables, recyclables will be distributed across a, a resource recovery network. So the inorganic service we see as a short-term fix it creates a consistent service level which allows us to, to move towards the principle either of disposal of pays or for the services to be uh, delivered through local community recycling centres. So in this space, that, that inorganic material is being used as the feedstock for, for a lot of these sites. And um, Council is facilitating 12 community recycling centres over the next uh, 10 years based on... Um, a sustainable business model, so working with, through a social procurement process, looking to get local community groups, social enterprises on board, maybe with some initial uh, seed funding, but uh, uh, trying to enable them and support them through our community development team to become uh, self-sustaining businesses in the long run. So my colleague um, Jenny Chilcott did a great presentation yesterday, if any of you saw it, around uh, some of the work that we're doing around engaging communities. And that's a whole range of work from those more traditional door knocking campaigns where we've got a team of waste wise advisors, we call them, who are, who are out um, speaking a range of, of languages, trying to get into those uh, harder to reach communities to change behavior, to, um, to increase awareness to um, a place-based approach to, 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 to mobilise communities around waste. And there's been some great stories where council have facilitated these groups, but, but it's been very much a community-led approach. Um, so if you get the time, have a look at um, Jenny's presentation. And there's a video there which I think uh, is, is, is pretty cool around how people get enthused and, uh, and excited about waste. And I think with this, it's, it's trying to tap into the more non-traditional areas where, where discussions around waste are normalised rather than it's, uh, it's seen as council coming in and, uh, and, and pushing a waste message. So probably like a lot of you, we do a lot of communications around waste. We've created our own um, website um, called Make the Most of Waste, which um, has started with a focus on recycling. So trying to get recycling people to recycle right. So we've created this video in these two characters called uh, Tin Can and Plastic, um, which has got a lot of publicity, a lot of promotion. And the pictures on the right um, is a recent stunt that we did where we, we tipped a, a recycling vehicle outside the town hall, a lot of media coverage. Uh, and the, uh, the lady on the bottom right hand corner is our deputy mayor. Um, and it was filmed just going through, through the recycling about what is recyclable and what isn't. And it was a really good news story. Um, and it highlights that about 10% of our recycling is, is actually contamination. So I've probably touched more on the, um, the, the residential, that short-term target of 30% reduction in uh, household waste um, or curbside refuse over the first few years. Um, just, just briefly, I just wanted to touch on some of the other things that we're, we're looking to do to, to influence the, the remainder of that waste stream, that 30%, uh, predominantly um, commercial and industrial or, or C&D waste. We have a Waste Minimisation and Innovation Fund, which um, we use uh, money that we get from the levy, and that's a, a seed fund for a whole range of uh, initiatives, uh, public, private, community, and it's, it's based around... Um, 
just trying to look at innovation on commercial waste, um, behaviour change, organic waste, um, and resource recovery. We're doing quite a lot of work on deconstruction as well, and we've supported a number of demonstration projects to encourage use of recovered materials and focus very much on designing out waste at the front end. We also have a, a waste bylaw. Um, the previous councils had a, a number of, of uh, bits of bylaws which were some, in, some effective, some, some weren't, and some were non-existent. We've got a consistent bylaw now where we can influence um, any activity that goes on, on on the public highway, so any operator has to be licensed, and there are some conditions attached to that about type of receptacles they use, uh, timings of collections, and also a focus on um, an obligation on a waste minimisation message as well. As I said, uh, product stewardship is is uh, very limited in in New Zealand, and the waste levy is um, incredibly low. So, in the absence of any um, Real leadership from from our, our ministry, the council will continue to advocate for, for those, um, and we recognise that it will have a significant impact on uh, on what we do and uh, on how we achieve zero waste. And, um, and clearly, we recognise there's some great work and some great examples across the world that, that that's working that could be used in a New Zealand context. Okay, that's fine. That's that's me. I think to summarise, um, I think it's been a a challenge, certainly bringing those seven, eight council contracts together, uh, and it is a very large transformation program that we're, we're going through. I think key to the success will be winning over uh, the industry, so we, we clearly can't do this on our, on our own, and we need uh, a strong procurement process where we, we can stimulate innovation, but also taking the community with us as well and looking at some new and different approaches to, to, to engaging communities. Um, so look, we're always keen to, to, to learn and improve, so please, if you're in Auckland, uh, pop in and say hello. Thank you.